First at four, breaking news from Detroit's west side. Police say a gunman is barricaded inside a home, and there's apparently a child inside as well. We are at the scene. We're also watching jury deliberations in the trial of two men accused of plotting to kidnap Governor Whitmer. Everyone's wondering, will there be a verdict this time? And here's Kim Adams. A nice, pleasant start to the work week with temperatures in the upper 70s to so right around 80, but a weekend warm-up headed our way on the forecast straight ahead. Well, hey, look at this. This is pretty cool, right? Now, what would you say if I told you this was a high school parking lot? We have the story behind it coming up. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. That breaking news is on Detroit's west side. Police have surrounded a home. They say a gunman is inside and apparently there is a child inside as well. The situation started just before noon in the 8200 block of Pearson Street. That's just west of Evergreen. Detroit police and state police are both on the scene. Neighbors in the area are being asked to stay inside. Others are being asked to stay away. Now we do have a crew on the scene monitoring the standoff right now. Officers say they are looking into whether this situation might be linked to a shooting on Sunday night on the same block. A man was killed last night. If there are any changes, we will definitely bring you updates here and online at clickondetroit.com. We'll also have a live update on Local 4 News at 5. Jury deliberations continue in the case of two men accused of plotting to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer. This is the second time Adam Fox and Barry Croft Jr. have had their fates in the hands of a jury. Earlier this year, jurors could not reach verdicts in the cases against those two men. During today's closing arguments, prosecutors said the two men were once outside the governor's house with night vision goggles and guns, and they'd already made a bomb. Defense attorneys argued FBI informants egged the men on and urged jurors to send the FBI a message with acquittals. We'll let you know when a verdict comes down and have a live update tonight at 5. The Ford Motor Company trimming about 3,000 white-collar jobs. The automaker says it's part of a cost-cutting effort as it makes the transition toward battery-powered vehicles. Now, the cuts represent about 6% of the full-time salaried workforce in the U.S. and Canada. Ford says those affected will get severance pay benefits and help to find new career opportunities. Well, the push to switch to electric vehicles in Michigan just got a boost with more charging stations coming to Metro Detroit. Volta Charging and Kroger teaming up to build charging stations at local stores all around the area. They'll go up in Southgate, Roseville, Westland and Lapeer. Today's announcement happened at the parking garage at the Detroit Pistons new practice facility. There's already a charging station there. We're different from other charging businesses because we use advertising to make EV charging more accessible and install chargers where people already spend their time, shopping centers, grocery stores, and garages like this one. It has 2,800 charging stations all around the country. Also has a mobile app which allows users to find a nearby station, check availability, and then report any issues. Well, tomorrow is going to be a really big day in the repairs of that big water main break that frustrated more than 130,000 people in Macomb and Oakland counties for about a week. Crews have removed the damaged section of 120 inch pipe. Replacement materials are expected to arrive tomorrow with repairs scheduled to be finished by September 3rd. The Great Lakes water Weather Authority did end the boil water advisory over the weekend for all seven communities impacted, but it says if water pressure drops too far, it may need to be reinstated. All right, let's take a moment to get our first check on the forewarned forecast. Many of you might be seeing some sunshine, but there also could be some rain in the area. Kim? Well, very isolated. We're just talking about one little place in Macomb County. Otherwise, most of Metro Detroit is dry. I expect it to stay that way uh, for quite a while, in fact. But we are watching one little area of rain. We'll zoom in closer for you here. Just moved out of uh, the southern part of New Baltimore. New Haven getting a shower right now and also up in Richmond. But again, across much of the area, it is absolutely beautiful out there with just some clouds but otherwise it's been a nice day temperatures running slightly above normal out at metro airport normal high right now is at 81 degrees metro is at 83 but most places right on track with the norm in the upper 70s to low 80s this evening it's nice pleasant the humidity is not too bad out there but we are looking at a big warm-up by the middle of the week we'll talk about that coming up in just a few minutes Look forward to it. Thank you, Kim. Dr. Anthony Fauci became a household name in the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic and then a subject of partisan attacks and anger. Today, he made it official. He is ready to leave his government positions, but 
it doesn't sound like he's retiring. Kimberly Gill is tracking this story for us from the newsroom. Kim. Hi, Karen. Yeah, good afternoon to you. Dr. Fauci did not say he's retiring. In fact, it sounds like he might have something in the works, but it's definitely time for a change. Right now, the doctor is the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and he is also President Biden's chief medical advisor. Fauci spent more than five decades in government service. He helped with the first response to HIV and has been a key player in the COVID-19 pandemic for the past two years. Fauci released a statement saying he will be leaving both his current roles in December, calling them the honor of a lifetime. He also says he's leaving to pursue the next chapter of his career. Now, it's not clear what that means, but Fauci says he wants to keep advancing science and public health while mentoring the next generation of scientific leaders. Now, today, President Biden released a statement about Fauci's departure, saying in part, whether you've met him personally or not, he has touched all Americans' lives with his work. So right now, Fauci is 81 years of age. We'll have to see what this next chapter is all about. But for now, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right, we appreciate it. Thank sure. you, Kim. Well, the Justice Department has three more days to turn over a redacted version of the affidavit used to justify a search of former President Donald Trump's Florida home. The judge is making, hoping to make parts of that affidavit public. The Justice Department has argued too much of the information is too sensitive to make it worthwhile and it should stay sealed for now. The judge wants to see the changes by Thursday. More negotiations will likely follow. FBI sees 11 sets of documents it calls classified two weeks ago now. All right, there's something really colorful going on at an all-girls high school, Mercy High, over in Farmington Hills. Seniors getting ready to embark on that next important phase of their lives are first doing something pretty cool. Jason Goldthorpe has their story. Oh, no! Somebody has vandalized this high school! <laughs> Actually, not. But what you're seeing here at the parking lot of Mercy High School is something happening in parking lots of high schools all around Michigan right now. The smell of paint still lingers on the air here in the Mercy High School parking lot. There's some tape that still needs to be removed and some of the evidence has been left behind. But this is no senior prank. It's a senior privilege. Painting the parking spaces at Mercy has always been kind of a senior year tradition. Natalie Murphy is a senior at Mercy who has been looking forward to painting her parking spot for quite some time since I was a freshman. I mean, I think like when I came into Mercy for the first time, I saw all the different parking spaces and I was like, this is awesome. And so now I'm finally a senior and finally able to do this after COVID. So I'm really excited about it. Painting senior parking spots is nothing new. Here's what my daughters did when they were seniors, but the level of artistry and creativity of the spaces at Mercy is something to be noted. I love all the colors and like being able to come in when it's maybe like a cold morning and seeing something that you did earlier in the summer. It's just really positive and happy. Inspiration comes from all over movies and TV shows, board games, funny sayings, or in Natalie's case, something she saw on Pinterest. No matter the creative spark or the talent of the artist, this was about the young women of mercy being able to bond before their final year. Yeah, it was so much fun. We had like music and donuts and it was just it was really good to start off the senior year like that. This one's actually one of my favorites because Karen, I feel like this is something you would do. I failed art, yet she created a parking spot masterpiece. So many of these are really masterpieces. One of the perks of being a senior, right? We're in Farmington Hills today. Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. That is so cool. Thank you so much, Jason. By the way, you may have noticed that some empty spots are still taped off, and that's because students are able to paint their spots through this Sunday before school starts.